Well, hello. This video is for my friend, my YouTube friend, Lena. Uh, Lena in the United States. She's got a lovely video channel, Lena Chan, C H A N, um, where she's doing musical stuff. And we met through Tom Straley channel on YouTube. Uh, I was trying to remember what the, the proper title of the channel Pro Guitar Secrets, Tom Straley, Pro Guitar Secrets. Uh, and there's a lovely community and 200 and plus 50, 250 lessons uh, for people that want to play the guitar. And Tom's, Tom's a great guy. Anyway, that's where I met Lena. And Lena today was doing some articulation exercises. Her English is beautiful, but she wants to improve it. And articulation really is a key thing in that for speakers of other languages. Now, I don't speak Mandarin. I don't know much about it, apart from that it has tones, which are very important. It's also not called Mandarin by speakers of that language. God, damn it, what's it called? Bong, 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 bong. You have to be careful because you can end up, you know, swearing horribly, saying terrible things about people's grandmothers if you get the tones of uh, Chinese wrong. I think I'm right. I think Coca-Cola means bite the wax tadpole if you don't say it properly. Anyway, Lena was doing uh, Peter Piper picked a pick of pickled pepper. Peter Piper picked a pick of pickled pepper. Where's the pick of pickled pepper Peter Piper picked? And I offered to provide a few more tongue twisters. Now, I'm a, a qualified teacher of speech and taught at a university for many years, uh, trained as an actor and teacher. Uh, and I worked in BBC Radio for many years. I was a news reader and continuity announcer, and then I was a program presenter and DJ. So I've been on the world service. I'm actually Scottish and not English. And um, although the, the language register I'm going to use is English as a kind of base, Southern English, but I will refer to American pronunciation as well. So when we're talking about articulation, we're really talking about what happens to the sound, which is produced by the air passing through the vocal folds, and then it's modified by the lips and the tongue and the teeth, and obviously the muscles of the jaw. So relax your jaw if you're going to do these. You're going to follow along with this. I'm going to put up the slides so I will disappear merciless, mercifully from view, I will vanish, and all you will get are, are the slides of the uh, a little bit of water. I'm a bit dehydrated. Um, I'm going to be referring to this book, which is called, I will put it up clearly, it's no longer in print. It's called Speech Practice by Greta Colson, and I saw it listed on Amazon secondhand for about $5.00. Might not be a bad idea to get hold of it, but it's, it's just exercises. If you're interested in more detailed information, then I, again, I'll put this one is still available, still in print. It's called Your Voice and How to Use It, the Classic Guide to Speaking with Confidence by Cicely Berry, OBE, Voice Director of the Royal Shakespeare Company. It's a wonderful book. I used it extensively. And for it, it, it goes into these, the things that we'll be doing, this articulation, it goes into exhaustively, uh, also with vowel sounds, but of course the best thing would be if I maybe did this in a, a Zoom situation with anybody interested in it, we could go through it. Maybe, maybe we could do that, Lena, we could do a Zoom. For instance, there's, there's ones that I think are great, I mean, this one as well, because we're going to be talking about P sounds and B sounds. So that exercises the lips. And then and so on. I mean it's a huge amount in here. And examples of, of really good monologues that you can practice, like uh, in Chancery. From Bleak House by Charles Dickens. London. Michaelmas term lately over, and the Lord Chancellor sitting in Lincoln's Inn Hall. Implacable November weather. 
as much mud in the streets as if the waters had but newly retired from the face of the earth. And it would not be wonderful to meet a megalosaurus forty feet long or so waddling like an elephantine lizard up Holborn Hill. And so it goes on. Beautiful. So practicing reading out loud is a very important part of learning any language. I, I'm very interested in languages and accents. Ear training. Ear, ear, ear. Train your ear. If you're listening, if you're learning English, you're listening to English speakers and you're trying to imitate what they say, what they sound like. Now, if you're in the States, the pronunciation is slightly different. And of course, depending where you are in the States, it's different. Depending where you are on one side of the Hudson, the word mirror, mirror, I think you'll get that in Jersey, New Jersey. Is it New Jersey? Is it not what New Jersey, no Jersey. The mirror, I looked at myself in the mirror. Of course, on the other side of the river, I looked at myself in the mirror. I looked at myself in the mirror. The mirror, the mirror. Doesn't really matter. Tomato, tomato. Potato, potato. Nobody says potato, do they? Anyway, so there are these differences. And I did notice, Lena, um, Peter, I'm, so, I'm using a very clear T sound. Americans don't use, I don't know what must use it, I would think, but uh, Peter, Peter would be more common. In America, wouldn't it? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. Where is the peck? Except that the where is assimilated, the is vanishes, and it's where is the peck of pickled pepper Peter Piper picked? Damn Peter Piper and his peck of pickled peppers. I'm sick of it. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, exercising these muscles, different muscles will be used in different ways by different languages. There are sounds made by the French which we don't make. So, oui, oui, not a sound that you would get, might get it in Scotland, I suppose. And there I did a very Scottish thing. I dropped the T in Scotland. Scotland! And you get that in England as well, this, this glottalization. So words like bottle become bottle, 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 bottle me. Uh, bottle, battle, 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 battle. So these things happen in pronunciation. I'm just looking at my waveforms. I think they're all right. I'll boost them up. I'm a little bit further back from the microphone. I've got my door open today because it's a bit warm. So we're going to start with lip examples. We'll do a couple of those. I'll put the slides up. Then we shall go on and do some tongue examples. There's some lovely ones there to sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock, awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shock from a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block. That's a good one. Then we shall go to the tongue twisters, and then we'll stop there for this one, unless I'm feeling hugely energetic. Okay, so first slide coming up. So, uh, lip examples. So, in some sound patterns, the lips have special importance. So, let's see if we can do this one. Pimlico, pamlico, pumpkin and peas. Pepper them properly, else you will sneeze. Pop in a pipkin and leave them till one. Pimlico, pamlico, then they'll be done. Pimlico, pamlico, pumpkin and peas. Pepper them properly, else you will sneeze. Pop in a pipkin and leave them till one. Pimlico, pamlico, then they'll be done. And another one for the lips. When the pods went pop on the broom, green broom, and apples began to be golden skinned, we harboured a stag in the priory coombe, and we feathered his trail upwind, upwind, we feathered his trail upwind. So for the purposes of these exercises, over-articulate them a bit. When the pods went pop on the broom, green broom, and apples began to be golden skinned, we harboured a stag in the priory coombe, and we feathered his trail upwind, upwind, we feathered his trail upwind. That's a lovely poem. 
another line of poetry. The moan of doves in immemorial elms and murmuring of innumerable bees. The moan of doves in immemorial elms and murmuring of innumerable bees. I must try that one in an American accent. The moan of doves in immemorial elms and murmuring of innumerable bees. That's one thing. The Americans will not see innumerable. That's an English pronunciation. They'll say innumerable. Just as they don't say news, they say news, the news. What's the news today? And I tend to say what, what, uh, as a Scot. I don't know whether anybody else does. There's W-H as in what, what. A lot of people say what, what. People also confuse T-H with F. So they say thing for thing. The, 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 the. They're different. The is made with the tip of the tongue on the, the top teeth at the front. And fa is made with the teeth on the top teeth on the lower lip. And these are both fricatives. P and b are plosives, bilabial plosives. One is voiced and one is unvoiced. I've studied phonetics as part of my degree, and I still keep a phonetic dictionary beside me. Okay, so we have done a couple of lip examples. Let's do some tongue examples now. This is nice. To sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock, in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock, awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shock from a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block. To sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock, awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shock from a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block. Now that bl, bl, bl and there are other sounds in English which I think are more difficult for speakers of certain languages. I know a lot of Hindu, Hindi, Urdu speakers find the w sound difficult, and they tend to make a v, v, so they will say world, the world rather than the world, the world, v, the world, which is a fricative, uh, a, labi a labiodental fricative, v, v, and w, 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 which is bilabial, fricative, w, yeah, v, v, w, w, I'm not really sure what that was called, actually, anyway. Uh, and here's a beautiful, beautiful thing from A Midsummer Night's Dream which is I'm intending to uh, make a film soon. There's a little kind of extract teaser on my YouTube channel here with puppets playing the parts. It's a comedy. It's, it's written, but obviously difficult to get these things made. I've made a few films. You spotted snakes with double tongue, thorny hedgehogs be not seen. Newts and blind worms do no wrong. Come not near our fairy queen. Philomel with melody, sing in our sweet lullaby. Lulla, lulla, lullaby, lulla, lulla, lullaby. So that's using the blades of the tongue. That's the sides of the tongue. La, la, la. You can feel them. The, the blades of the tongue go up to the top teeth, the sides. La, la, lullaby, lullaby. La 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 lullaby, la 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 lullaby. So practice that. And I, some speakers of of uh, other languages other than English, I mean, can have trouble with the l sound and tend to make a r r r sound. Philomel with melody, sing in our sweet lullaby, la 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 lullaby, la 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 lullaby. I think that's just very beautiful. Uh, now, how many more of these shall we do? Let's go on to the tongue twisters. And I'm, I'm going to skip Peter Piper because it's, and it's a good one. Do it. Practice it. But we, we'll work on some other ones. This is a good one. Both, I can't even do it myself. Both bustled busily buttering buns. Both bustled busily buttering buns. Both bustled busily buttering buns. 
Again, an American speaker would probably go both of us so busily buttering buns, buttering buns, buttering buns. And they wouldn't use that pronounced English t. Again, still good to exercise it, to be aware of it, and good for ear training. And as I say, 98% of it is ear training. Let me just have another sip of water. I've also got a cup of tea, which has got ground pepper and cinnamon and things like that. I became addicted to um, chai when I was in Kathmandu. But that's a whole other story. I was in a monastery for a little while. Okay. Betty Botter bought some butter, but, she said, the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. So she bought a bit of butter better than her bitter butter. <laughs> and she put it in her batter, and so the batter wasn't bitter. That's a tough one for anybody. Betty Botter bought some butter, but she said the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. So she bought a better bit of... Damn. So she bought a bit of butter better than her bitter butter... And she put it in her batter, and so the batter wasn't bitter. I let myself down with that one. Let's do a uh, lot of hot, hot coffee in a proper copper coffee pot. The muscles get tired, so do rest between doing these things. And take your time initially. Do it slowly and build up speed. It exercises the muscle. Remember to relax your jaw when you're doing it. I don't want anybody getting headaches. Lots of hot coffee in a proper copper coffee pot. Lots of hot coffee in a proper copper coffee pot. Lots of hot coffee in a proper copper coffee pot. Let's do... Oh, I like this one. Who are you, sir? Tell me who. What's that to you, sir? Who, sir? You, sir? What's that to who, sir? Who, sir? You. Who are you, sir? Tell me who. What's that to you, sir? Who, sir? You, sir? What's that to who, sir? Who, sir? You. It's a good one. Um, I like this. This is from Lewis Carroll. Great galumphing globes of gas. Great galumphing globes of gas. Great galumphing globes of gas. Uh, and I'm going to skip Peter Piper. <clears throat> Am I? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. Where's the peck of pickled pepper Peter Piper picked? Then we shall go... This is a good one. A hasp, a staple, and a padlock. A hasp, a staple, and a padlock. A hasp, a staple, and a padlock. And another one... Well, this is a very common one used a great deal. Round and round the rugged rocks, the ragged rascals ran their rural races. Oh, goodness. Right, Lena, I'm looking forward to seeing your uh, re return video on this. <laughs> round and round the rugged rocks, the ragged rascals ran their rural races. Now, I'm doing the Scottish. That's very Scottish. Rural. Rural. We pronounce the R quite strongly. So an English speaker would go round and round the rugged rocks, the ragged rascals ran their rural races. An American speaker would go round and round the rugged rocks, the ragged rascals ran their rural races, I think, roughly. And the last one we're going to do in this particular, although there are lots more here, so we might come back to this in a future episode. I confess I find this one very difficult. Number 36 in the hymn book. <laughs> Theophilus Thistleweight, the unsuccessful thistle sifter, thrust 3,000 thistles through the thick of his thumb when sifting a sieve of unsifted thistles. Now, that th sound, th sound, is a tricky one. As I say, a lot of people substitute the f F sound for the. In the, the tip of your tongue bounces off your top front teeth. In fa, your top front teeth are in contact with your lower lip, usually sort of slightly inside the lip, not very far. 
very, very far, a very, very far. Actually, v and f are the same, but just aspirated or not aspirated. Theophilus Thistleweight, the unsuccessful thistle sifter, thrust three thousand thistles through the thick of his thumb when sifting a sieve of unsifted thistles. So if you practice all the ones that we've mentioned today, uh, and you do that for about a week, I think we could then go on to some even more complex examples like I am the very model of a modern major general. I've information vegetable, animal and mineral. I know the kings of England and I quote the fights historical from Marathon to Waterloo in order categorical. I'm very well acquainted too with matters mathematical. I understand equations, both the simple and quadratical. About binomial theorem, I'm teeming with a lot of news with many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. I'm very good at integral and differential calculus. I know the scientific names of beings and emulculus. In short, in matters vegetable, animal and mineral, I am the the very model of a modern major general. And we'll leave it there. All right, Lena, see you online.